we don't negotiate with terrorists. We just buy oil from them. Oh. Sell them guns. Also. Yeah, yeah. True. Yeah. N- true. Nuclear bombs. And right. then overthrow other governments for them, but we don't come out and say that. Right, and then we form breakaway governments and talk to the nighttime mm-hmm. angels of the uh, DMT world or whatever. Yeah, the clockwork elves. <laughs> Did everyone listen to the Joe Rogan, <laughs> Alex Ross? Yeah, at Alex least Jones. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Bro- uh, yeah, Alex Jones. Alex Ross is a, a great artist, by the way. You should look him up on oh, okay. Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Most people are, are one and a half ways through it now, the, okay. the Alex Jones episode of Rogan. If you haven't started it, go back and listen now. A lot of people saying the best podcast ever recorded, current <laughs> current operation notwithstanding. Right. Yeah, Tyler was saying he, he showed it to a friend who was new to podcasts, and he was like, oh, this is awesome. Are, are they all like this? He's like, no, <laughs> no, no, no. No, this is the greatest podcast in the history of our great sport. Um, it, it does, for my money which they're free it does it get better than jones and eddie bravo arguing flatter yeah, theory and talking and stuff? over each oh, other yeah, and stuff it's, and... it's a little much sometimes oh. he got alex jones got really annoying for the half hour or so after eddie bravo showed up because they couldn't figure out yeah, who was supposed to talk and, and he was very like oh let me just say this let me just say these poor etiquette yeah i thought rogan was a great like if something started to get too carried away or you know like he was a great uh, sort of mediator, of, like shutting certain shit down. Like, no, next topic, we're not talking about flat Earth or. Well, they kill you for that, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Or, or, or. Joe, or. have you have you sampled this? Do you get down on the Rogan ever? I don't. I don't really get down on the Rogan, but I have. So I did sample that, and it, uh, I have also previously sampled Infowars with Alex Jones, and it's basically an episode of Infowars with some guy actually being like. Wait, is that true? What, yeah. what did he, you say? And he would slow him down every once in a while. I was like, whoa, 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 hold on. You just you just said like eight things. We need yeah. to go back to the second thing, and you need to explain what you're talking about. And how many times on that whole episode did he was, hey, no, Alex, you're my friend, but listen, you're ranting. Slow down, and let's go back. And Because the way he speaks is just... Bam, 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 and thoughts yeah. linked to another. Um, he, he talked that Rogan Jones, talked about it being about. a river, yeah. And, and yeah. Alex Jones is just kind of going with the flow of a river, uh, you know, million miles an hour. And he's like, "Wait, no, no, I saw this rock. I want to talk about this rock." So yeah, he does a good job of bringing it back. What's fucked up listening to that is um, Rogan has his fact checker, Jamie guy, kind of looking up the first level of the insanity that Alex Jones is bringing up, yeah. and it's real. And then like you're not sure where to stop, kind yeah. of believing some yeah. of the shit. Where reality and fiction meet. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah that, it's very kinda... confusing if you're impressionable, which I am. Like, I I can't watch a documentary without... You know, I have to do, like, actively, like, pause it in the middle and be like, remember, this is a documentary. This is, this is bias. This is someone's opinion. And they have found facts and figures and interviews to support that opinion. Remember, you're not, you're not, you're not going to go vegan after watching some documentary. Like, control yourself. I'm really bad about that shit. So I, my, my wife, my vampire, she is very, um, very close minded, right? She has a very, her mind is just sealed up. She formed her opinions and, uh, if it's not queen, I don't care. <laughs> That's, you got to keep that in the back of your mind, John, as a, as a, uh, a tell all book about your relationship. Yeah. My wife, my vampire by, yeah. <laughs> by John Michelle. Maybe Joe can get to work on some chapters for me or something. <laughs> He'll, you'll be my editor. Anyways, similar to when I, dabbled in the Ben Shapiro world, I had to tell her about this podcast. I was like, oh my God, Alex Jones was on Joe Rogan and Eddie Bravo was there and they were talking about just everything under the sun in the world of conspiracy theories and shadow government and all this stuff. Oh Oh, yeah. Her face immediately went into full emotion. No. She heard the the trigger name, you know what I mean? Alex Alex Jones. It was just like, no, I, I just, I'm like, hold on, just listen. It's fine to, you can disagree with someone on everything that they say, but I don't think there's anything wrong with just, you know, sampling. You can get in there, and, and I think he's kind of an interesting guy. I mean, I don't agree with everything he says, and I'm, I'm certainly not a Trump supporter, but a mind that works like that and is interested yes. in digging. And I was telling Tyler this morning, because we were watching clips from it this yeah. morning, he's very endearing qualities, Yeah, when he, especially when he gets with Joe. And they start talking. Oh, he's a great balance for that type of person, yeah, the, yeah. the Joe Rogan, because he's he's very much always on, it seems like always on the listener's side of playing devil's advocate, immediately disagreeing, just to, just to hear the other side of it and challenging, you know, thoughts and uh, accusations, things like that. So that's why I think those two together, that's like, 
it's pretty but, good. It's a pretty yeah. good pod. Yeah. Did, didn't Alex Jones have to come out legally and say that he was playing a character for one reason he was getting sued or another? He did. He did in his divorce proceedings. He said that. Okay. So what does that mean for his actual? What are you doing over there? He's masturbating, shaking, shaking this coffee. Okay. Definitely looks like you're jacking off. Okay. <laughs> for the listeners at home, I just see Carl's <laughs> right hand his wildly moving, moving, and he is shaking a cold brew. That's confirmed. Doesn't mean he doesn't have his dick out too. <laughs> I can't could see be, that. but he had to say that he was playing a character for his divorce proceed for his marriage. He was a character, or for his yeah, show? I don't know what the context was of okay. the question that was asked or anything like that. So, okay. did you guys catch the full story on the Sandy Hook thing too? Because I was like out of a loop on a lot of that. He had claimed on his show or publicly that he thought it was all he, yeah. He and, brought it up it because because something. that was floating around, and that's what either. sort of started the yeah, rift yeah. between him and Rogan. That was like not. It only lasted a month or two. But remember, he came on, and then he Rogan caught a bunch of hell from his listeners yeah. saying, "Why did you not bring Which, up the fact that he denied?" Yeah, th- yeah. there must have been something else to it because Rogan typically is not a guy that like shuts down or, or whatever yeah. just because like he gets shit all the time for why did you have this guy on your podcast and like give him a platform? Oh, yeah. And he's very much like, no, we should be able to talk to everyone. And that's why yeah. the podcast is brilliant. Yeah. It's long yeah, yeah, form, yeah. and he's getting all sides, and he answers and, and to no one. he's curious, too. Yeah. Like, he genuinely wants to hear about everyone he brings on his show, what, what they have to say. I liked, stuff, uh, so. I really enjoyed how upset Alex Jones was getting at Joe when he kept saying, you know, hey, I don't know about yeah. this. Oh, you, you know, know. You, you know. know. You're full of shit. You You're know. a smart guy. Yeah. Come on, Joe. Um, you know all this oh, shit. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> it was... Partially, I think, about Sandy Hook stuff that he got, like, deplatformed and everything. Okay. That's yeah, when Joe sure. decided not to have him but, on again. But and did the families file lawsuits against him? There, some too? of them I think have, that, yeah. Yeah, I think that happened. Because he, he's got a platform, and he got people excited enough, and he appeals to people that are already kind of unstable. I guess the families were, like, getting harassed over it, maybe some threats of, like, That's why, what did, it was. why yeah. did you, you know, go along with this and pretend that, That's what that this was. all happened? But, you know, it's a much easier to, to just put it on him. And not think about the fact that these people are fucking mentally unstable and well, just, yeah, just put all the heat your... on him because he talked about something and brought up an idea and went down the road in discussion yeah. that other people were going down on a show where he does that. I don't know. I don't think if, if you can't blame violence on video games, then you can't blame people making their own decisions to hassle family members based on something he said on his show. He's definitely a, a modern day snake oil salesman. Uh, he, he's got a bunch of platforms and says... He gives you enough of a real idea that you can latch mm-hmm. onto, and then basically it extrapolates it to a lot of it goes back to China, which none of us know what the fuck goes on in China. So you can pretty much blame anything on them. It's the breakaway government. Well, I think we are fairly certain right now that they're doing this social credit system. Sure, that's, sure. But I mean, that's he, definitely. He, he said a lot more about. Oh, oh sure. The Chinese, sure. yeah. They, they do this. this but they're, if they're going to do that. They're I'm also, not going to believe everything that he's going to say about them, but I don't like them, and I don't think we should do business with them if they're at all if they're going to treat their people like that, they that's are. That's a little scary, yeah, what, what they're doing there. Yeah. yeah. They're also making the human-animal hybrids. Right. <laughs> the chimeras. And yeah, the, right. Some the of this chimera. is real. Like, it, it's yeah. really fucked up to try to figure out where it stops yeah. being well, real. And I, I imagine that we all live at a surface level, citizen level of information and media and what we're exposed to and what will even be reported on. Mm-hmm. And so I was trying to explain this to my vampire last night. I was like, you have to imagine a world where you're one of the elite top 1%. You're a billionaire. Money means nothing to you. Imagine the options that you have, right? So maybe you could get some infant blood just to have in, you know, in the fridge for a, a rainy a rainy Sunday and, and and ingest uh you know baby limbs or whatever yeah, like, you guys think i smell good now <laughs> <laughs> wait until i get that fresh i'm just i'm not saying i think that's real i'm just saying in the realm of possibilities what of did humanity i do in 2000 <clears throat> you know what i mean do you guys understand what i'm yeah, saying like yeah. I do, that i don't think that that's real but possible plausible yeah but that's part of the way that he can rope you sometimes too is because there are, there are real things that are declassified like operation northwoods where we know that our Joint Chiefs of Staff had plans presented to our president at the time to hurt American yeah. people and blame it on Cuba. Yep. I've always said if back then they were going to do something like that, well, there's no telling what they would do. Right? Look right. at the technology right now and look at the way the population has grown and, and, right. and everything. Like, 
I, the the trouble with a lot of these it's ideas scary. Is, is just that um, any sort of conspiracy r- requires so much of secrecy. Uh, so how much do we trust somebody to not talk? And with the way platforms are right now, if you say the wrong thing, you could get recorded or or Twittered or Me too or whatever. Mm-hmm. Not so much Me too possibly. But uh, it's just, yeah... Requires so much in terms of gar- guardians of secrecy that I that's, that's inherently out of hand. That's I think you can just you can get through that by compartmentalizing everything Maybe. and convincing people that they're not doing exactly what they're doing. Control Maybe. of information Maybe. on a le- yeah. on a level system too. You know you're not you're not letting the bottom guys in the no, in the in the in whatever your conspiracy is know about X Y and yeah. Z the master plan at Be- the top. You know because again <clears throat> Operation Northwoods was presented and yeah was secret and became declassified and and that you know they wanted to do that his bit about spreading syphilis too like that looked pretty verifiable yeah they found information on that almost immediately no i think it was in the 60s or 70s right like it it was a while ago but yeah it was totally docu on on record this is on record that mainstream uh, yeah south america like the u.s government sponsored a test or whatever where they just gave a bunch of people syphilis in south america and encouraged them to spread it to people they knew yeah (laughs) <laughs> like what gotta control the population people are bad it's <laughs> got approved by the ethics board and uh okay All the right. uh the elder elves want blood remember <laughs> the first to approach uh, a human uh, well they come from satan Joe. yeah the first to approach the hu- the living are are the evil right they're the ones right. that will god interfere. doesn't want to interfere but satan is is you, just fine you have to it. seek out the good but the evil will will is will approach you. you so yeah. don't i guess the takeaway is don't do dmt and meet with these <laughs> uh technological masterminds Oh man, it, I mean it's it's trippy shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If yeah. you play with it, if you if you allow your even for fun, if you allow yeah, your yeah. mind to go down those those paths, which a lot of people don't, I they don't shut it up. Right? You know, yeah. They they I, I got my ma- mind made up about a lot of things. I'm shutting it down, and a lot of people don't do that. And I think they're missing out because I yeah. mean you don't have to change your opinions on all of these topics, but man, you can have a lot of fun and you can really entertain yourself picturing. Some of these things as as reality as fact yeah. that is yeah. entertaining, man. Yeah, and I mean, fuck it. Like people want to believe in God and stuff. So fuck you. If I want to, yeah, right. if I want to go down these right. roads a little bit, and maybe I want to believe something crazy about DMT. Yeah. Fuck you. You believe in a magic creator of everything. That, that, so at the that end of the, sits above us and judges us. At the end of this podcast, we're gonna stop Kevin's heart for five minutes, <laughs> and we're gonna inject oxygen into his bloodstream, and he is gonna meet with the uh, the elves. The, in the, the clockwork elves in the, yeah. in the eighth dimension who and, are the grays and I he's think. gonna come back with information that is going to aid this podcast so look forward to some advancements in this podcast i think i think we're really going to push forward and yeah. and roman reigns never gonna have to deal breath. with cancer again oh right after, after yeah, we get the information the from the from the clockwork elves. <laughs> well if you've had an intense psychedelic experience uh dmt or salvia or anything like there is a weird fucking feeling of Something else is going on that we don't really understand when we're walking around with our normal senses. I thought there were elves on the other side of the wall. Yeah, I don't like the shame I feel when talking about this kind of stuff. Because we do live in a real world where I feel like if someone listened to this, they could hear us talking about illegal narcotics or whatever, and my kids will be taken or something. You know what I mean? Like I feel strange about that, like talking about this on the podcast. Yet at the same time, it's super interesting to me, and I want to discuss it. Yeah, so. it's, it's way more interesting than just, all right, yeah, we figured out reality. We understand it. We're one generation removed from apes, but somehow we, we know all the rules to how things go. Yeah. It's just not how it is. Yeah. And you get far enough out, there's a real feeling of some other funky shit going on. Yeah. Yeah. No so one if, knows. Yeah. So if you go to dmt.com and you <laughs> enter the promo code PCRN, you can get 10% off of your first uh, gram of dimethyl tryptophan, whatever it's called. <laughs> Speaking of all that, uh, March 5th, if you're listening to Recorded, it, it'll be out right now. Psychonautics, that documentary by Shane Moss, I believe is his name, that, that's coming out this week. So really excited. He just does tons of psychedelics, films it. I believe he has some interviews with sort of like scientists that know something about it but most of it is sort of his experiences on all the psychedelics wow. and uh he gets real crazy so that's coming out um yeah two days or by the time you hear this recorded it's up now psychonautics a comedian's experience something just search psychonautics where can we where is this on what is this airing on i'm not really sure okay. he's, he's got you know you can go to his website and it just says you know march 5th i believe it, okay. it's going to be digitally released on march 5th okay so it'll be on some format you know 
iTunes or Sounds whatever it is. Interesting. And cheers to people like that because that takes some balls to do that to your mind. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, good lord, yeah. glad someone's out there doing the doing the Lord's work for put us it, and to put it out there for everyone to. Yeah. So definitely listen to that Joe Rogan podcast. Uh, I know that we're talking about a podcast on a podcast. Very, uh, very silly, but um, yeah. But just yeah, it's great. It's worth it's great. the listen. And if you're if you feel apprehensive about it because of who he is and stuff, just just give pa- it, power through. Give it a chance. You'll be entertained. If, yeah. Even if you don't believe any of it, you're going to be highly entertained. It can, yeah, you can you can scoff at the entire thing and you can listen to it alone and never share with anyone that you listen to it, but I think it's worth a listen. Yeah. <laughs> it could be your little secret. It's like when you fire up the old Nickelback greatest hits CD uh, on your way home from uh, you know from, from your accounting job. No one has to know. It can yeah. be your secret. Yeah. I thought it was it be kinda, our secret. I thought it was kind of weird, though, how... Um, like he he was smoking weed on on that tobacco. Podcast. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. Like just how some th- really good tobacco. How thinly veiled that little uh, facade of oh I don't smoke weed, Joe. And he was like oh this is just tobacco <laughs> without weed, but we'll still pass it around because that's that's what you do with tobacco that isn't weed. All right. If you don't if you don't listen to that podcast, all you have to do is go to YouTube and there's like several three to ten minute clips because Rogan does everything live on YouTube as well whenever he records these podcasts. But when he's losing his mind. When I first listened to it in the car, I was like concerned. Oh man, is he gonna have a get heart attack right or? now? No, I just thought like somebody was gonna get hurt or he was gonna have a heart attack or something. But he gets fired up, like screaming, waving his giant right body around well, Farley style. Our, our good friend Baker pointed out a couple of tells in that video too, where he alleges that you can deduce that he's brought some cocaine with him that day too. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, He's very into the to the nose stuff just by how often he wants to go to the bathroom when Joe wants to go to the bathroom. Oh, and then at some point the booger sugar. He says, I think around the four hour mark, after they both go to the bathroom kind of back to back or close to the same time, he says you can hear Joe sort of sniffing, you know, clearing out his sinuses in the background. So Rogan. check that out if Rogan you're in a little, on the yayo. <laughs> little and, little drug Easter egg for you. Uh, wow. Jones does a lot of grinding the teeth. Too. Yeah, I mean, you can see it almost constantly. On He's the video. a comic book character, man. He yeah. really is a cartoon. That guy. Fuck. Yeah. 